In this video, I'll quickly talk about the large data set for A-level mathematics because I will be using that for the uh, statistics and mechanics paper that I'll be going through from the sample assessment. So I need to talk about this data set quickly just before I go through that uh, so it makes a bit more sense as I'm going through the walkthrough of the exam. So the large data set, each exam board has their own large data set and you need to be familiar with that data set before you go into paper three of your A-level exams. Uh, so what is the large data set? Well, it's an Excel spreadsheet with lots and lots of data in it. The Ed Excel one is on weather. Um, so it has the introduction here. So it says Pearson have provided this large data set which will support the assessment of statistics in A-level mathematics paper three and AS mathematics paper two. Students are required to become familiar with the data set in advance of the final assessment. Uh, so it has some information here. So data set source. The data set consists of weather data samples provided by the Met Office for five UK weather stations and three overseas weather stations in the time periods May to October 1987 and May to October 2015. The weather stations are labelled on the map shown. So over here we have the map. We have Heathrow, Hearn, Leeming, Camborne, Jacksonville, Beijing and Perth. And uh, further information about our data source can be accessed here. Uh, and then it has an explanation of the variables. So let's have a look at one of the spreadsheets. So we'll look at Camborne, May, October 1987. So yep, go to that sheet and it has the different variables here and the dates down the side. So we've got mean temperature, daily total rainfall, daily total sunshine, uh, wind speed, uh, maximum gust, humidity, cloud coverage, visibility, pressure, wind direction, and uh, cardinal direction as well. So you need to become familiar with those variables. Again, on the information page, it has the explanation of where those variables come from and how they're measured. You need to read all of that and be familiar with all of that information. Uh, you need to know things like uh, when they measure rainfall, sometimes they describe it as a trace of rainfall. And that actually means an amount less than 0.05 millimeters. So that's important if you're given a table information and it says trace on it, you need to know that that means less than 0.05 millimeters. You also need to know whether these variables are continuous or discrete and other things about these variables. And you can find all of that out by reading this information about where they come from and how they're measured. And uh, also you should be working with this data set at some point over your A-level course uh, so you become familiar with all of this information through doing activities and things like that involving the data set. So this is the data set. Uh, hopefully you've seen it before, become familiar with it, get to know it so you're prepared for paper three on statistics where they will be giving you some questions on this data set. So let's have a look at some example questions. So this paper is by Crash Maths. They've put a whole paper together just on the large data set practice. I'll link this in the description if you uh, want to have a go at these. They also have solutions, so I'll link those as well. So let's just have a look at a couple questions from this paper. Question one says, Ellie wants to investigate rainfall in the UK in 2015. She takes a random sample of 14 days from July 2015 for Heathrow from the large data set. The data she collected is summarized in the table below. Um, so here we have the table with the rainfall and the frequency and you can see through this question You're not going to obviously have to memorize all the data in the data set. You just need to be familiar with uh, The various aspects of it. So let's have a look part a says work out estimate the mean and standard deviation You could do that whether you'd seen the large data set or not similar for B It says interpret the standard deviation C part one says comment on the suitability of Ellie's sampling method well, she wanted the rainfall for the whole of 2015 and she's only taken 14 days from July. Uh, so I'd say that's not a suitable sampling method. And part two is where you need to have seen the large data set before. It says suggest how Ellie can make better use of the large data set for her study. Uh, so you need to have seen that before to suggest something. So you could say she could take data from all five of the weather stations around the UK and also she could take data from more months because the data in the data set is from May to October so because you'd seen the data set you'd be able to suggest those two things for Ellie so that was question one 
I'm just looking at these quickly to give you an idea of the type of exam questions you might have to answer. Question two, part A says, give an example of discrete variable in the live data set. See, this is where you need a good understanding of the different variables on the large data set. Um, and after you've checked those variables out, you'll know that the two discrete variables are the cloud cover and the uh, wind speed on the Beaufort scale. So they're the two discrete variables. Uh, the question goes on, James is studying the total amount of sunshine and leaming in 2015. He wants a sample of 15 data points from the large data set. Part B says explain how James can use si simple random sampling to obtain a sample size of 15 from the data set for his study. Uh, so there are different methods of simple random sampling uh, and you do need to understand how they work. I really hope they don't give questions like this uh, based on the data set because uh, Excel has really easy sampling functions in the data set itself. Um, so I would hope that they give questions like this on random sampling in a slightly different context. This is a bit off-putting for me because I would never, you know, come up with my own random sampling method. I would just use the spreadsheet and the functions in the spreadsheet to sample. Um, but there are, you know, you do need to show your understanding of simple random sampling and different methods to do that. Uh, so that's what they're looking for in that question. Anyway, it goes on, James works out that the mean of his 15 data points is 5.6 hours. He concludes that in 2015, Leeming has an average of 5.6 hours of sunshine each day. And part C says, comment on the reliability. Well, it's not reliable because he's only taken 15 data points for the whole year. Uh, so that's not a reliable average. And part D says, state one limitation of James using a large data set for his study. He wants this average sunshine for the whole year. Well, we know because we've seen the large data set before that it only goes from May to October. So that would be the one limitation I would state that it doesn't go for the whole year. It only goes from May to October. So it's not going to help him find an average for the total year. Okay, so I just wanted to quickly look at some questions on the large data set and give a brief introduction to that. Oh, by the way, I'll link everything in the description. I'll, I'll link the Excel spreadsheet just in case you haven't got that already or if you've lost it or whatever, you can download that again and I'll link these questions and the solutions in the description as well. I uh, hope that was useful. Leave a like if it was. Subscribe if you want to see more content and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.